Well, Tom, you're just about halfway through your first student trip. Think you'll stick with railroading? Oh, it's fine so far. But a couple of my buddies say there's no future in it. You know, you hear so much about railroads not being around much longer, that they can't meet competition, they don't keep up with the times, you, you know. Yeah, I've heard all that. But long after I'm Pocatello Knight Yardmaster in the Happy Hunting Ground, and you're a fire-eyed officer who has fricasseed supervisor for lunch, this outfit will still be here. I'll tell you why. Those rails. There are 790,000 miles of iron road that lace this world of ours. And the wheels that roll on them are the basis of the most efficient means man has yet invented for fast mass movement of the things he makes and the stuff he makes them from. Some competitors may claim to be faster. Some may tell us they're cheaper. But there's a joker. They are all raising the cost of transportation because we taxpayers are putting a lot of the bills for their radar and drawbridges and locks and one of the biggest items of all, heavy-duty superhighways with traffic enforcement and control systems. But railroads build and repair their own roads and safety devices and pay high taxes on them besides. Even at that, we could haul most things for less than the other fellows if we were allowed to really compete. Missouri Pacific Lines, one of the nation's largest railroads. Behind it stands many a decade of railroading in the Midwest and Southwest. Years of peace and prosperity. Critical years of conflict and confusion. But these were also years of progress. Pioneering, experimenting, to set the modern pace in transportation. Missouri Pacific set the modern pace in passenger transportation with the Eagles. Not just a new look, but new speed, new safety, and new special attention to passengers' comfort and convenience. A new standard in relaxing travel. Years ago, Missouri Pacific showed its pioneering spirit with Eagle Freight Transport Service, rounding out train schedules for LCL shipments, with over-the-road hauls and platform-to-platform -platform deliveries. Hello, Ohio. I'm Westbrook Van Voris of the March of Time. I've just stepped off the Explorer. You perhaps remember me as a reporter of unusual news events. Well, I am, and today time is marching on right in your backyard. We stopped here to pick up you. Will you get aboard? I've got a story for you. Get comfortable now. Our trip ends, you might say, with a stop at Trinway, Ohio, at 8.51 any Sunday night. But the first stop we'll make is a stop in history, for this is the story of Ohio and railroads, and the two grew up together. The railroad reached into every corner of the land. It provided a growing America with a spark to light the torch of progress. It was the dynamic force needed to transform a vigorous, sprawling country into a rich and powerful nation. New inventions spurred the continuing advance of our industrial needs. And in the vanguard of these achievements was the automobile. The early horseless carriage gave little indication of the tremendous popularity it was to enjoy. 
or the vital effect it was to have on the American way of existence. The roads and streets that had served the horse and carriage soon became inadequate to meet the demands of automobile travel. The passing years brought successive road building programs initiated on local, state, and national levels. As roads were built, the number of motor vehicles using these roads increased at an accelerated pace. Today, we are still faced with the need for safer, better highways to support our motorized economy. One segment of that economy, the rising industry of motor freight carriers, has a particular interest in adequate highways because it depends on them for the speed and efficiency of its operations. Here is another road a railroad. One of its characteristics is excess capacity, the ability to take on more of the transportation load. Both railroad men and representatives of common carrier trucking companies believe our transportation system will benefit by putting trucks on that steel highway and carrying them between cities on railway flat cars. 83 cars and a mile long train inbound from Los Angeles. 25 of them will go to Chicago, 37 to points east of Chicago, and the remainder will be delivered locally. How these cars, 83 out of 3,100 that arrive daily, get sorted and reformed into new trains at Santa Fe's new computer-controlled freight yard outside of Kansas City is our story. The Argentine Yard, a design for tomorrow. The Argentine Yard is the hub of 13,000 miles of Santa Fe transcontinental freight network. Understanding what happens there is not complicated. Our train came in here, 83 cars bound for Chicago and different destinations. The Argentine Yard is a sorting machine for putting trains together. At the Argentine Yard, cars get switched and it's all done by a computer. Automated Argentine. When the train comes in, the engine is pulled off. And now it's no longer a train, just a string of cars going somewhere else. Our string of cars moves down the track. It divides, divides again, and again, and again, until there are 48 different tracks that hold nearly 1,800 cars. Each leads to a different destination. 